In previous lessons, we showed you how to create shapes, both procedural and custom shapes. We also covered the fact that when you create a shape, not only do you create a shape layer, which has things like fill and stroke properties that you can customize, but you also create a path, which is the actual form that the shape is filling. But did you know that the direction of a path can impact how shapes are actually filled? Well, in this video, we're going to cover that. Now, as a disclaimer, you probably won't run into this issue uh, very often, but as you create more and more complex objects in Rive, you're going to need to know how to problem solve some of these things. So let's get into talking about fill rules and how the direction of a path can actually affect that. Now, the first thing that we need to do is look at our path. If we go into edit vertices mode, you'll notice this little triangle here, and that denotes the direction that the path is created or the winding order. Now, this winding order gives your path a mathematical value, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a second. We can control the direction that our path is created in by using this reverse direction button. So right now it's created in a clockwise direction, but if we hit the reverse direction button, it's now going in a counterclockwise direction. Now, why does that matter? Well, when things are created in a clockwise direction, they have behind the scenes a plus value. And when they have a counterclockwise direction, they have a negative value. Now this only comes into play when we have multiple paths. So let's say we have this path here and we've duplicated it and we move it over to the side and we go in and we reverse the direction. So now we have this hole punched out between our two shapes or where they actually overlap. And that has a lot to do with the fill rule. So the fill rule that we always use well, the majority of the time that you're going to use is the non-zero fill rule. So basically what this is saying is that when two paths overlap, in this case, where the resulting value is a non-zero number, fill that area in. But where it's a zero number, we leave out that part of the fill. So again, this path here is, let's say it has a value of positive one, and this path here has a value of negative one because it's going in a counterclockwise direction. So the area where they overlap here has a value of zero, which is why it's not being filled in. Now, I know this is a lot of math mumbo jumbo, but this is really important to understand as we start adding additional path layers to a shape layer, because sometimes when we create, let's say a pin path, we're not thinking about the direction that we pin it and then we add it to a shape layer and we could get some weird stuff like this. Let's say we're building a character and we want to give our character some ears. So we create a rectangle and maybe we want to round off some of the corners. And because our ear and our head share the same color, we want to add that path to our shape. And there we go. Both of those have the same color. Now everything's fine, uh, but we want to reuse this ear and put it on the other side. So we duplicate the ear, we move it over and we scale the ear so that it's um, flipped horizontally. Well, when we've done that, we've effectively changed the winding order. So now you can see that there's this hole punched out here where those two paths are intersecting. So we already talked about the fix for this. We can go into our path, reverse the direction, and now we have uh, all of our paths are going in the same direction. So in this case, um, if this path, the head path is going clockwise, it's got a value of plus one. This path is going clockwise as well, and it's got a value of plus one. So the resulting um, value of that overlapping area is two. So it's a non-zero number. That means that it'll get filled. Now let's look at an example of maybe a time where we actually want to use that fill rule to our advantage to punch a hole in something. So let's say, for example, you're trying to build a donut. And if you don't know anything about fill rules, then what you might do is create an ellipse and say, hmm, I need a hole punched out of this. So maybe instead of a fill, I'll use a stroke. And then I can scale this down a little bit and change the color. And there we go. We've got our donut shape, but now it's time to add the icing. So how do we do that? Well, maybe we could add an additional stroke and scale that up and change the color. And that looks fine. That's a good base for a donut. I think that'd be acceptable for most folks. 
Uh, but what if you want to add in some wavy bits, like some bits where the icing actually is dripped over the side of the donut, um, and this just isn't quite getting the look that you're wanting? Well, let's use draw rules to um, or fill rules to actually achieve that. So we can pin out a shape. And we'll have some of the parts hang over the side of the donut. And some of them go not all the way down. So something like this. Okay, we can fix this up right here. All right, great. Now we can change the color if we want. All right, cool. We've got that nice little pink icing. But now we need to punch the hole out of the center. We've got two options. We could use an ellipse. Or if we want, we can go in here, select our path layer, and start pinning out a new shape. And we can actually do the same thing we did on the outside, which is have that icing sort of wave. And then we can fix this up. And as you can see, because I've created the paths in two different directions, we've actually got a bit of a clipping effect going on in the center. We're punching that fill out. And there you go. We've got some uh, goopy icing for our um, donut that we can continue to customize with things like shadows and um, sparkles and or sprinkles and stuff like that. Now, in the previous examples, we've been talking about how multiple paths on the same shape with different uh, winding orders can affect how things actually fill. But there's another situation where you might run into a problem, and that's if you have a situation like this. Let's say I have a character, and I like all the colors that I have, but I want to mix in some blue with this entire character. Well, what I can do is create a lighting effect with an ellipse and give it a radial gradient, and let's say we want some blue. And maybe on the back, we want some darker blue. We can turn that down a little bit. Maybe we want it under, you know, lit from the bottom because maybe the sun is bouncing off of the water here. And so we want the belly to be a little lighter blue and then the back to be darker blue. Okay, cool. We've got this. Now let's select a good blend mode. I think the hard light is going to work here. Um, and we can probably turn down the opacity just a little bit more. All right, cool. Well, the main problem that we have is that our lighting effect is existing outside of our character as well. So what we want to do is clip the lighting effect to our character. So we can select the lighting effect, hit clipping, and select our bird group. Now, as soon as it clips, you can see we've got some issues here with some parts that aren't actually filling. And this has this, this is the result of the same thing that we talked about before, where we have some paths that are winding in one direction and others that are winding in a different direction. And in this case, because we're using the group as a clipping source, this is basically like your path layer. And this ellipse here is basically like your shape layer. So what we've got to do is go into the paths that make up our bird and reverse the directions of some of them. So I'm just going to go into the beak because it's got a couple, it's the spot where we've got multiple spots punched out of it. And I'm just going to go in there and reverse the path order. And there you go. We fixed that issue and we've got one more to fix up here. We do it the same way, reverse the direction. And there we go. Now we've got a nice little lighting effect on our bird and we can continue to customize this, like maybe put additional strokes on top of this for better lighting. Um, things like that. But anyways, I hope this helps you sort of identify some of these problems when you run into them in the future and gives you ways to fix them.